Forget all the Halloween stuff, the October stuff that's starting to go up in stores. It's beginning to look a lot like Flipmas. And quite frankly, um, it's looked like that a lot around here. Like you can't take your lights down. You better just leave the tree up because it happens a lot. And it doesn't yeah. matter if you're Michigan. It doesn't matter if you're Alabama. It doesn't matter if you're other historically uh, top programs. Sure. We going to start talking about Auburn in the same conversation because that's where they're going to flip some of these targets. Zach, the defensive line class in 2025. Loaded. Extra salty. Drink plenty of water. It's extra salty uh, with another addition to that class. Yeah, Nate Marshall, um, as Brad said, was committed to Michigan, was Michigan's top-rated player in their class. No longer. He is now part of Auburn's 2025 class. Fenwick High School, which is in Oak Park, Illinois. This is a nationally impressive class. I know there's been a lot of talk about winning in-state, but mm -hmm. Nate Marshall, the number one defensive line men couldn't finish that sentence defensive lineman uh, according to rivals i didn't know if you were going woke and be like defensive line person nope defensive not doing that I, I i just didn't finish the word in my brain i did but it didn't come out of my mouth no uh then espn has him as the fourth ranked defensive line man uh but but all in all i mean he's, he's a consensus top five defensive lineman in in, in this 2025 class which when you already look at the other guys that are coming in you know, you've got Jared Smith on the edge, uh, Malik Autry, Antonio Coleman, um, Jordan Crawford, which I said on another show, it's like probably the most like under discussed player in this class just because he's been committed for so long, but he's so, so good. I mean, this defensive line class continues to get better and better and more and more impressive. Yeah. How did Clemson rise out of sort of the mid-level of college football in the early 2010s and establish themselves as a national power? How did they, if you had to narrow it down to one position, is defensive line. Yeah, I mean, they had a lot, like quarterback helped for sure too, but yeah, defensive yeah. line. I mean, I'm trying to think like the first really good Clemson D lineman in that run, like was that Daquan Bowers possibly? Probably. Like at the mm -hmm. DN spot, yeah, he was infectious. He was very, very good. So yeah. Look, and, and all, some of this is a numbers game. I think all of these players do project to be really solid players at the next level, but even if only half of them are, like it's still just so, so strong. Nate Marshall, 6'4", 265. I mean, that frame and that ability, it's just you can do a lot with that. If yeah. you're a college coach, if you're a Vontrell King Williams, you can look at that frame and say, oh, man, I can put you in an edge rushing situation, I can add 15 to 20 pounds to you and put you at end. I can scoot you inside uh, in pass rushing, pass rushing situations. Can't talk this morning. I mean, th there's just so much to love about everything that Nate Marshall brings to the table. And you're about to watch an Auburn defense rotate five, six guys on the interior of the defensive line. And a lot of them aren't going to be here next year. There are a lot of seniors, a lot of upperclassmen, a lot of opportunities for 2025 defensive linemen to come in and get some playing time. May not be 50 snaps, but you're going to be a part of the rotation pretty early on if you handle that transition, and I think that's a big selling point. Yeah, one of those is going to be a true freshman, too. Malik Blockton yeah. is going to get some snaps, especially in pass rushing downs, it sounds like, when Auburn goes into a dime set, that's what I've been told. And so I, I'm just excited about this coaching staff being able to say, like, see what Malik did? See what Malik did? Like, well, you're rated higher than him. Like, yeah, come on, let's go. Let's go. If you can play, we're going to put you on the field and you'll be next to TJ Lindsay. You'll be next to Amaris Williams and Keldrick Fox coming back. You will not be doubled. And that's just an exciting thing to think about the future of this defensive line, Brad. Uh, and they're led now by Vontrell King Williams, the defensive line coach. And I've got a new, a new way to talk about um, this coach. He's not a diamond in the rough. He's just a diamond. He's not in a yeah. rough anymore. He's at no. Auburn. He's the Auburn defensive line coach. Look at some of the guys that have coached this position in the past Ooh, and what it. a rock star position yeah. this is. Tracy Rocker played mm. and coached this position. Rodney Garner coached this position. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, we can go back to some of Coach Dye's days, and we go back as far as you want to. It's not the rough. This guy's just a diamond, and he's proving it over and over again. Well, and, and hats off to him because the big question is like Auburn's going with him. Like everybody internally loves the guy, but it's like he hasn't recruited. And Coach Freeze values so much of this recruit. I had no yeah. question 
just from talking to, I mean, Jason Jones came on locked on Auburn a bunch and talked him up even when he was just the assistant D line coach. It's like, okay, this like, he's well-respected. But my question was, can he recruit day one? Can he recruit day one? And boy, like there was no, just like, let's slowly get into the water here. No, let's dive in and assemble maybe the best defensive line class in the country. But the crazy thing is too, it's like, okay, they've got all these guys in the front seven committed, but let's give them credit where it's due. Philip Bleedy, Isaiah Rakes. I mean, this is this is but, a guy who's been working at yeah. all levels on the defensive line. Yeah, the 25 class isn't the first proof of performance. Um, it it look at the current defensive line, watch the rotation. And you know, the next step is see how they're coached on the field. Let's watch their technique. Are they winning their one-on-one battles? Are right. they are they holding up? Sure. But what we can see to this point, all right. Uh, you know, until you've read the entire book, all you can go on is the amount that you've read. So to this point, he's he's passing the test and you have to you as, like because that position is so critical. You can't just hire somebody who you don't think is ready for all of the challenges like you can't hire somebody for that job to yeah. tiptoe their way into it, to slowly transition. You got to hire a guy you know is ready to hit the ground running and credit coach freeze and company for making that higher on the defensive line. Yeah. And to use your metaphor or, or analogy about you, you can't judge the entire book yet. It's like, we are in the prologue, but he hasn't coached a, a game day yet in that spot. But yeah, the prologue looks outstanding because I mean, what did we say when we were leaving spring? I said pretty yeah. consistently. And I, I, most people did. I'm, I'm sure you did too, Brad. It's like the D line, like we, we got to add some guys. Mm -hmm. We got to, but not only did they add some guys like, there are folks saying that the defensive line is the biggest surprise of fall camp. But we got to give credit where credit's due. Yeah. Hats off no to question. you, Vontrell King Williams. King is in his name for a reason. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> he's he's not Vontrell Prince Williams, is he? He's not no. Vontrell Jester Williams or Squire or anything else. King, Goat, whatever we want to do. Uh, I mean, off to an incredible start. Hats off yeah. to him. Seriously. It's it's so fun. So fun. All right, we are, Zach, we are Cam Coleman days away from Ooh. kickoff. So we're eight days away, and as such, I want to talk about the top eight players. I want to do this in a couple of fun ways. Okay. You're going to give us the top eight players currently on the roster. Yes, I hate my I'm, list. I hate it. I'm going to, you hate your list? I don't like it. I don't feel confident about it. Come on, Zach. It's Friday. We need positivity. Where's your? We need sunshine around this list. We just did that for the last eight minutes. All right, that's fair. Um, I'm going to give you the list of the top eight players since the year 2000. All right, since the okay. year 2000. Because if I try to go give me the top eight ever, I mean, I'm going to. We're going to be here a while. First, though, look at the hat in the back. You see the hat in the background, the Barner hat. You got to get yourself one of these. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You got to get. You should do the rest of the show. Just like that. Same, that same comes world. from from Barner Supply Company. BarnerSupply.com. These are these are Barners making gear for Barners. We're taking that name that others want to use as as disparaging, and we're embracing it. And we're going. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with being a Barner? You talking about blue mm -hmm. collar, hardworking, honest, uh, doing solid labor? Well, that's us, and that's these folks. Auburn people, Auburn connections, Auburn gear, BarnerSupply.com. Now, listen, this weekend, um, take advantage. Use promo code VillageVice at yep. checkout. No space, just one Village Vice. Um, you're going to get 15% off. That code is good through the end of August, or that discount is good through the end of August. Um, it won't be quite as much. It won't be 15% after August. So take advantage now. Load up this weekend. Hats, shirts, stickers, lots of other gear. BarnerSupply.com. Love it. Love it. All right. So whose list are we doing first? Are we doing mine first or yours first? Mm, we'll do yours first. Okay. So if you hate it, let's get it out of the way. <laughs> this one's going to get roasted. Okay. Lists like this are why I don't always read the YouTube comments. All right. So I've got three honorable mentions. All right. I just... I just had to even... mention them. Okay. Um, Keontae Scott, Keandre Lambert Smith, Robert Lewis. I have okay. them just outside the top eight. I like the fact that there are two, two of your new transfer receivers are right in or right around the top 10. That's yeah, good. I That's think important. they're top 10 or top 11 players, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when we redo, if we redo this list three or four weeks into the season, I think yeah. KLS and Robert Lewis have a chance to be on there. I, I, I can't. Just, I, I do. 
I can't wait to see your top eight if Keontae's outside the top eight. Keontae Scott, outside corner, I don't think is a top eight player. Okay. In, in, inside the field, you know, nickel or safety, I, I like. I just like his game more there. And yeah. so, okay. I hope I'm proven wrong. I hope I'm proven wrong. Eight, I have Eugene Asante, Auburn's mm-hmm. linebacker. Yeah. All right. You cool, you, you cool with that? I, again, I want, I, you, I, I want you to rip this to shreds, Brad, because I, I feel like that's what's deserved here. I mean, I feel like Eugene is more of a, like, I don't know. Well, let me just see who's left. Let me let me see the other seven, because yeah. I would have Eugene a little higher than that. Rivaldo Fairweather is seven. Okay. Would you have Eugene higher than him? Probably. Yeah, yeah. because I'm interested to see where on the priority list Rivaldo falls in, in the receiving game. Okay. Okay. I hate this one. I have, I have Cam Coleman at six. Yeah, he's going to be much higher. He's going to be He should be that. higher than that. Is it just because he's a freshman and we haven't seen it yet? He hasn't played a snap yet. Yeah. That's 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 all it is. I don't that's care. I've seen, I've seen enough of Cam. I've I'm, seen enough he, of him he should everywhere. Be higher. He should be higher. I just feel like everybody else on this list has earned it. Yeah. And then there's one I'm just obnoxiously high on. I'm just not. I'm just going to die on that hill. You probably know who it is. So. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 Um, five is Connor Liu. Yeah. All right. He should be top five. Yeah. Four is Kay and Lee. Oh, I thought, no, I thought he's the one. I thought he was going to be much higher than that. Uh, I thought you'd no, have him in the I, top I think, three. I think I'm pretty fair on Kay and Lee. I think he's the fourth best player on the team. I'm just so high on him. I mean, okay. he's going to be, yeah, he's, yeah. <sighs> three is Keldrick. I have Keldrick Falk at three. If Keldrick becomes like the third best player on this team, you're, you're at, I mean, you're going into the Iron Bowl with eight or nine wins already. Okay. All right. That, that'd be I, great. I, I have Jalen McLeod at two. Yep. Okay. And I and I have Jarquez Hunter at one. That's that's so interesting because I wonder. I'm I'm still so curious to see Jarquez's workload carry load on this team. I don't think it matters though because I think even if he gets whether he gets ten touches a game or eighteen touches a game, mm-hmm. I still think his impact. And just overall talent. And there's different ways we could do yeah. this. I, I would just say the best eight players. And I think pound for pound, yeah, position for position, I think Jarquez Hunter is the best on this team right now. Yeah, I, I don't disagree and most with proven, that. By the yeah. way, and most proven. No question. Leading, returning rusher in the SEC. That counts yeah. for a lot. And and I love Jarquez Hunter. That doesn't need to be misconstrued in any way. Like that yeah. I'm not a huge Jarquez Hunter. My question about his, is just about the split of the carries and how that will happen. So once again, right, everybody's list is going to be different. But my thought process when when it's just not most important, but best. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think if we're talking about best, I don't think other having depth of position should hurt your case. Fair. And that's why I have Rivaldo at seven. It's because like just because – Peyton may throw it to Cam Coleman or, or or KLS or like he may get less targets than a year ago. I don't think he will, but he might. I don't think that makes him a worse player because there are other guys around them. Same with Jarquez. Just because Damari and Jeremiah are really, really good, it doesn't make Jarquez worse. So yeah. that 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 was my thought process there. I like that. Okay. All right. That's not a bad list at all. That's not bad. What was your least favorite part of it? Uh probably Cam being Cam and Eugene, I think could be how far would you uh, move them up? Yeah, Who's that, Cam better than on this list? Would, would you have Cam above Lou? Probably. Are you like a top three center in the country? Yeah, you would? Probably. Okay. And I'd probably move Eugene. Ab- well, I don't know, though. Because the importance of how much credence do you give to the importance of the position, the importance of the role that he plays on the team? Or are we just talking about the best su- player? The super subjective list. I right. Mean, it's just, you know, I, I think center is important. Yeah. I do too. I, I obsess over cornerback, so I'm going to put K and Lee in the top five. Yeah, um, I'd probably move K and down and put like, and probably move Connor and Eugene and Cam up a little bit. Okay, not, you know, I'm self aware enough I, to know that I'm too high on K and Lee. I'm just a believer. I kind I'm a, of, I'm putting a, I'm a B Lee, ver. Put that on a shirt. That's exact. That's exactly the phrase I was about to say. Put it yeah. on a shirt. I love that. Sweet. We're in sync. All right. Can I give you? All right. I'm gonna give you my list of the top eight in a second. Yeah. You can't do it quite 2000. yet. Yeah. 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 Uh, since since we're talking about shirts here, you've got the hoodie on. I've got the quarter zip on. Uh, Roback.com. They've got a, a new Jordan hair 
mm. collection, or I think it's called the Game Day Collection. They've got a Jordan Hare polo that is awesome. You've seen it out in the wild. Yeah. You, you've seen it, like, so good. Just, you know, just a few feet in front of you. Yeah. Um, and you said normally that guy doesn't look that good, but he looked great <laughs> during that. That's what you told me off, off, uh, off when we were done recording, which I thought was pretty telling. I probably shouldn't have said that. I'm so sorry, but uh, they've also got the like the repeating obby, old school obby logo as well. So be sure to check that out. Roback.com. They've got all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's almost overwhelming. Roback.com. Use promo code Vice twenty to to get twenty percent off your order. You're just a big liar, is all you are. Just a big liar. I never said that about Jason. In fact, he got tired of me following him around the rest of the night just because I wanted to be close to that shirt, you know? Sure. I got to get one of my own. All right, so we're doing this a little, again, eight days until kickoff. Yeah. Top eight players. Zach gave you top eight on the current roster. I'm going to give you the top eight since uh, the year 2000 because I tried to put together a list that was more than that, like that went back further than that. It's almost impossible. Yeah, I mean, my, the, the different eras, like it's so hard yeah. to – compare like a player that's playing now versus like a player in the eighties. It's just, it's impossible. Yeah. Um, all right. And I've just had to revise my list on the, on the go. Cause I forgot a guy and I can't believe I forgot him. So did you, did you uh, put Kay and Lee on there. No, I didn't put Kay and Lee on there. Invalid I, list. As far as my I'm number sure. eight, my number eight is Ronnie Daniels. Okay. Ronnie Daniels played in the 2000 season. So I don't know if that, if that counts or not, but in 99, he had only the second ever 1,000 yard receive, uh, year in Auburn history. I got to put him on the list. So cool. All right. um, maybe an asterisk on that because it wasn't the year 2000 that he had that year, but I'm putting him on the list. I've got Nick Marshall at seven. Wow. You think he should be higher? Um, just gut reaction that seems high, but let's, let's hear the rest of the list. All right. I got Josh Bynes at six. Josh, you know, anchored the defense national championship year, played 10 plus years in the NFL. How much is his, in a, his really like shockingly long NFL career play into this, you think? Uh, a fair amount because okay. Cam was the star of the 2010 team and Nick Fairley, but Josh played a critical role in a lot of those games. He, he was, was on the 13 team as well, wasn't he? I don't think so. No, uh, okay. he was finished in, in 10. But okay. but uh, that defense, a lot of people forget their second halves. They mm -hmm. shut a lot of teams down in the second half of games. You're right. And they don't do that, I don't think, with that really strong middle linebacker play. Okay. Um, I have Derek Brown at number five. Okay. Okay. I have Nick Fairley at number four. Okay. I have Carnell Williams at three. Okay. Ronnie Brown at two. Wow. Okay. Oh, I, I I think we really undervalue what Ronnie did in his career here because he shared the load with Cadillac. But Ronnie was, I think he was better out of the backfield. Uh, those those especially two thousand two when Caddy got hurt, Ronnie just kind of picked up the mantle and had a couple of games where he rushed for like a buck eighty or more. They almost beat. They should have beaten Florida in games. Yeah, like sure. That. Sure. All right. Um, and then obviously Cam, Cam at Cam. one. So that's my list. Jason Campbell is an honorable mention on that list. There, I mean, there are plenty of honorable mentions. Jason but. Campbell and Carlos Rogers not being on here is criminal. Okay. It's criminal. Okay. Yeah, you're you're the corner guy, so you're gonna get me on Carlos. And I and I should yeah, you know what? You're probably right. Carlos <laughs> probably should be on there. He where's Kay and Lee? He started my question. All four no. years. Yeah, started Carlos all Rogers years. for sure. Um you're right. But I don't know who I take off the list. I don't I think... I think you can take Josh Bonds or Ronnie Daniels off. Okay. Just my opinion. All right. Just my opinion. I'm not saying you're wrong. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, try I'm trying to think if anybody else is like glaringly like that's missing. I mean, Robert Johnson was a phenomenal tight end. If, okay. you're, doing, if you're doing it by position, you know, do you go Philip Lutz and Kirkland or do you go Robert Johnson? Like if it's... It's the team of since 2000, the team of the millennium, mm -hmm. and you have to get every position represented. Right, but yeah, but that's not what this is. That's right? not like, what this. That's, that's not what this is. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I'm fine with the rest of it. I would move yeah. guys around. Like I would have Derek Brown higher than Nick Fairley. I would have Carnell higher than Ronnie. 
I'd probably have Carnell at two, and I'd probably mm-hmm. have Derek Brown at three. Okay. Um, when you said Nick Marshall was seven, that initially seemed like I thought that was too high, but no, I think you nailed that. What about Trey Mason? Did you consider Trey Mason in this? I did. I considered him. Um, I just, I, I don't know. I just, I, I didn't think top eight, top 12, yeah. probably. Yeah, probably. And that could four. be like a recency bias thing because there's been some really good running backs, but I mean, mm-hmm. Auburn hasn't had many folks be invited to the, like the Heisman ceremony, you know? Right. And, and this is not a knock on Trey, but with a, like if the quarterback had been Chris Todd, I understand. Would, would he have had that kind of year in, in 2013? Did you consider Greg Robinson at all in this? I didn't, I didn't know. Probably, probably could have. I mean, I think, I mean, it feels weird not having an O-lineman as a top eight player since 2000, but like, it's probably true. Like. They, they probably don't like if there was he, one is it him no it's it well it could be lee zimba or or brayden Ma- brayden smith yeah i think brayden smith's better probably, than zimba but probably. zimba won a natty so it's yeah, like well, right. how much you weigh that that's right and yeah. lee start i mean lee started from his freshman year on it's true so brayden did too, starter. Though, right yeah what no. about a three-year starter three yeah year. right yeah so i could see that you can make that argument I love the arguments being made down in the comments because they're For not sure. real arguments. They're not like you guys are bozos. And No, just share your list. I, I want to yeah. hear both the, all, both lists. Top eight on this year's team, top eight since 2000. Um, kind, kind of a fun thing to do on the last weekend before game week because, Zach, the next time we're here, the next time we're talking on this very screen, it'll be game week. I'm trying to assemble my list real quick. Okay. This. Probably go Roger McCreary, number one. Sure. This is an all cornerback list. This is going to be all corners. Jamel Dean. Carlton Davis, Jamel Dean. Yeah, sure. No egg monogamy. Noah's got to be there too. Yeah. Okay. I Jonathan get Jones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go. All right. This was fun. Yeah. This was fun. I think so. This is technically our last show that you and I will do before uh, last show of the off season. Yeah. We made it. Yeah. It's done. We got football tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you got one game tomorrow. I'm, I know there's four. Like, it's enough. It's, it's enough to scratch the itch. It's, it's one. An, it's it's Georgia Tech, Florida State for as long as it's competitive. I think. Um, I mean, Georgia Tech plus was it, is it at ten and a half now? Like Georgia Tech yeah. plus the points has become a very popular pick. It sure has. It has become a popular pick. I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch it. But it's become a popular. Give me, give if me I, FSU. There's no way I would bet on this game. But if yeah. I did, I would take Georgia Tech plus the points. All right. Well, then we would be opposite if if I was allowed okay. to or did bet on this game. Yeah, that's cool. We can uh, we can fight about it on uh, on Monday. <laughs> That'll be fun. Brad, I think that about does it for today's show. It does. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, commenting, everything. We really appreciate it. Remember, I'm sorry, Brad. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just real quick, can I interrupt you for one, one second? Please. Last yeah. night, I went to my first Auburn soccer game. Boy. In, in in years, yeah, years. Talk about a, last, talk about a team that's been impressive so far. No kidding, <laughs> they ended up winning six to nothing. It was just me and my uh, my four year old went. It was her first time going. She's playing soccer. Yeah, um, she starts in a few weeks, and so we thought it'd be good for her to see you know the girls running around. And it was like one of the best nights I've had in a long time. Just me and my kiddo, and like she had so much fun. They handed out the like horn things, and she mm-hmm. thought that was the greatest thing in the world. So, Zillas. Yes. There you go. I, I knew that was what it was called, but I wasn't confident in my ability to pronounce it correctly. Sure. But yeah, seriously, if, if folks, uh, I mean, it's it's free. Like, you don't have to buy tickets. It's just general admission. Like, go go support this team. They're super fun to watch. They do a great job putting that on. I, I hate that it's been so long since I've been to a game. And so, especially with kiddos, a lot of people with their kiddos there, highly recommend it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, go support Karen Hoppe and her program. Well said. Well said. With that, we'll leave you. Until next time, everyone has vices. Yes, they do. Everyone has vices. Make sure Village Vice is one of yours. 